what manner of a conversation are we supposed to have today as a church? We are a day away from one of the most critical days in the history of our nation. If everything goes as per the script that has already been read to us as a nation, then several things will happen. But before I say what will happen, remember the prophecy concerning Kenya and the armed forces. It is not okay to see what the political class is doing and uh, from both divides because for sure it is going to lead us to a new order that many are not prepared for. You know, prophetically, our nation is in the plan of God. God has already declared that Kenya shall be the lighthouse of the gospel in the end times. He has already spoken, and when I say Kenya here, I don't mean what uh, politicians call Kenya, because many politicians call Kenya, they are part of the divide. But I'm saying the whole nation, God has earmarked this nation for the spread of the gospel in these end times. And we have a responsibility as a church of Jesus Christ in Kenya, the body of Christ, because that responsibility and that prophetic word squarely lies not in the denominational churches. It is not anything that the Catholic Church, the Presbyterian, the AIC Church, the APCA Church, or any other Anglican Church uh, is able to fulfill because when Jesus speaks about taking the gospel to the ends of the world, he means taking the fire of the gospel, and you cannot take it from where it is not. And so this squarely is a prophetic word concerning the believers in this nation, the body of Christ in our country. It is a little bit hard today in our nation to be able to know that we we the people of God, the children that God has ordained and sent into this nation, it is a little bit hard today to be able to get ourselves out and uh, congregate around the purpose of God uh, concerning our lives. Because right now, with the push and pull that is going on, politically speaking, then it is very easy for the children of the kingdom to be taken in and be sucked in and not be able even to know what kind of a spirit we carry and what kind of a people we are. We are standing uh, in the gap for the nation and we are standing in the gap for, our gen for the generations to come. There are generations which are coming after us but in our time, we have a responsibility even to be able to speak the truth and to shape uh, the conversations that take control of our destinies as we go forward. So every child of God, listen to me carefully, that you have a personal responsibility that you are going to give an account on the day that we go before God, on that particular day that you know that you shall appear before God on not necessarily for judgment because those of us who are in the kingdom, we already passed judgment into life, but we are going to appear before the judgment seat of Christ, the dais of Christ, the place where Christ will be crowning people. We shall appear there. We shall give an account of uh, our work. And so it is very good for us to be able to be cognizant of that fact, even as we have time to serve and time to work. So that we may do to our best that which we must do. I want you to know that if a servant of God is overtaken by sleep and slumber and he begins to drink and to, uh, uh, to surfeit together with 
uh, the dragons, then the master of that servant will come at an, an hour that is not expected, and he shall cut the uh, servant asunder, and he shall throw him out into utter darkness. I want you to know that Jesus Christ has appointed us uh, for a such a time as now, so that our voices can go out and be heard, even in the places where no other voice can be heard. Listen, as I say, remember the prophecy concerning this nation and the armed forces, because we, the days are closing in. We are coming close to the fulfillment of that prophetic word. We are coming very close, very close to the fulfillment of that word. And it is good for you, for me to tell you before it happens, so that when it happens, you can know that God is in control. Because one thing that I can assure you is that God is going to give us peace in this nation, but it is not the peace that Jubilee or NASA promises or is able to give, but it's going to give us peace. First, it shall be peace that, pass, that surpasses all understanding. And number two, it shall be peace that is going to usher in any order. Because the nation of Kenya is in the verge of disintegrating into particles and into small, small uh, portions here and there. It is not very good when the church also is soaked in this kind of conversation, political uh, conversation. Because you know, when the, 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 the church became part of the Roman Empire, we, we got the church becoming the state religion and persecution was multiplied. That is when we got the Roman Catholic Church, because previously it was the Catholic Church, the universal church, but now it merged with the government and it became the universal church of Rome, the Roman Empire. It became the state religion and there was all manner of infiltrations in the church to an extent that people were to buy their way into forgiveness and other things that are given freely in the kingdom. When, uh, during the colonial days, when the colonists realized that the church is able to penetrate in places where they were unable to penetrate, they empowered those who are moving out and they became tools of colonialism. And the gospel message was distorted, it was infiltrated, it was adulterated, it was diluted, it was compromised to a large degree, so much that we didn't get the right thing when the missionaries came down here in Africa. We got something that looked like the gospel, but it was actually not the gospel. We didn't understand that in the, within the gospel there is prosperity, there is healing, there is blessing. The colonialist uh, missionaries they brought in something that was similar. It is like a, like a familiar spirit that they brought unto us and we were unable even to understand the gospel as it is because it is supposed to be, the church was supposed to stand against the colonial masters and refuse to allow them to begin to oppress the Africans and to condemn the atrocities that were being uh, committed by the colonialists as they took over lands and places for themselves. But the church could not do that because it was compromised. And even the church in South Africa, uh, during the times of the other regime, we had the Dutch uh, church, which became the official state religion. And it was like the church of the government of the day. And uh, they, 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 they were protected and they were gaining from the, the, the regime that was pushing and and uh, maiming and uh, oppressing the indigenous people of South Africa. The church didn't show and didn't play its ro a role in that particular period of time, but it became like part and parcel of the regime that was then. I wanted to understand this is also happening in Kenya today, where we are having many of the pastors already compromised and bishops and they are unable to tell uh, the government exactly what they should tell them. They are unable to tell the opposition exactly what they should tell them because they are taken in and they are part and parcel of those systems. When you are part and parcel of those systems, you cannot be able to speak freely. That is why Paul would, 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 would be able to speak freely because he detached from that regime 
that was then in his time. I want you to understand that at this time the church is supposed to stand somewhere and understand that we must speak out. If we don't speak out as a watchman over this nation, then calamity shall come and, of, and befall the people, and their blood shall be required in our hands on the day that we appear before our master. I want to say this categorically, that this nation needs counsel. It needs to be directed. It needs to be given direction. It needs to be told how to move in these uncharted waters. Yes, I, 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 I know that people have their own thinking. But remember the Bible says that trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not unto your own understanding. This time, every politician should understand it is not time to lean on your own understanding, but it is time to understand what exactly is it that is going to happen after the day after tomorrow. What is it that is going to transpire thereafter? Listen and listen good. Things are not uh, the clouds that are covering and that are moving towards our nation. They are not clouds of, of joy. They are, not they are not bright clouds. They are dark clouds. I, I, I know that many people do not want to hear the truth. But I tell you, they are dark cl clouds that are moving closer and closer unto our nation. But I want you to know that God has already spoken that he is going to give us peace as a country. And that peace is going to come unto us by the major political players. If they continue to have their next stiff, they shall be removed from that uh, process of giving peace into the nation of Kenya. God is as more than a thousand ways of safeguarding his purpose concerning this nation. And so he is going to do that without the major political players, if need be. Because God is God. He's the one who lifts one, he's the one who brings one down, he's the one who moves nations into their destinies. And therefore, in this time that we are in the verge of uh, uh, charting the course of our destiny as a nation, I want you to understand as a member of the church and especially those of you who are born again, it is high time that you raised your voice. Speak peace upon the nation. Speak unto the people that are there in leadership. Speak unto the citizenry. Speak. I am hearing that people are so bewitched. They are not really thinking by themselves, but their thinking is influenced uh, so much by what the politicians are saying. There are people who are ready to go vote on the 26th. There are people who are ready not to vote at all. And they are, you know, you know it's, it's not a very good scenario for a nation. Because you see, the first time that we came together as a country to kick out the colonial masters, we didn't do it by a vote. We did it by understanding each other. And by coming together and fighting a common battle as comrades, right now we have a battle before us. Forces of darkness are hovering over the nation of Kenya. And let me tell you, it doesn't matter what you think anyone in the political circles is. As long as you have never heard them stand out and declare Jesus, Jesus Christ as their personal savior and portray it in their outworking, then be sure they are still under the bondage of the enemy. And if they get it, they are getting it for the devil. I want you to know that Jesus is helping us as a nation so to a place where we can be at peace. And that is why he is, in his own wisdom, going to give us a new order in our nation which is going to give us peace beyond that which we have thought about. And we thank God because that order shall be unbiased, and tribal. It shall not be religious, but it shall be able to be used of God for his purpose to come to pass in this nation. Shalom and God bless you so much. As you continue with the conversation wherever you are, 
speak peace and let people know how God loves this nation. And when we say the nation of Kenya, don't think he loves only the two tribes that are ruling today. No, he loves the entire nation. He loves everybody that is there in this country. It is important to understand that we are this nation collectively. And God is willing to sustain us. But that depends on how we handle the day after tomorrow. God bless you and favor you. And do you well. In Jesus' name we pray.